This video is actually about rolling without slipping, but this is as good a time as any to recap our rotational and translational relationships. So we have our translational relationships, we have our analogous rotational relationships, and we have our x, v, and a, analogous to our theta, omega, and alpha. Take a screenshot, do with this what you will. It's a nice set of equations to hang on to. Make sure you know when they're valid. For example, these ones are only for constant acceleration, but there you go. On to rolling without slipping. Let's say we have a wheel here. And this wheel on the bike is going round and round and hopefully rolling without slipping so it can pull us along. If we consider a free body diagram of the wheel, we can try and analyze what's going on here. We'll end up with the weight of the wheel acting down, the normal force from the ground acting up, and this actually might have other things from the rest of the frame of the bike. Um, but then the important part is that this frictional force is what's pulling us along as we roll here. That's what causes us to move. And actually, maybe we should use the back wheel for the drive wheel. I don't know. What we should find when we do this next part is we should find these relationships, that the distance traveled by the center of mass of this wheel is going to be r times theta, where theta is the number of revolutions or the in radians, how much we've spun. And similarly, the velocity of the center of mass should equal r omega. So let's see if we can do that. Our actual motion looks something like this, where the wheel is spinning and the velocity of the center of mass is translating along at the same time as the wheel spins. But at any given instant in time, at that point where we're touching there, remember, we want that static friction to pull us along. So we're not slipping there. What that means is that as long as the ground's stationary, our wheel has to be stationary there. So we have some velocity at this point P that should be zero for the wheel at any given point. We can express that as the combination of a translational motion where we say, pretend the wheel is just translating at the speed of the center of mass combined with a rotational motion where we rotate about the center of mass. So we're breaking our actual motion that has a translation and a rotation in it into separate translation and rotation. With this now, what we can do is we can compare these points and say that the velocity here at this point P has to equal the sums of the velocities at the same point on these two things for this relationship to be true. Looking at that, we say the velocity here has to be zero. The velocity here is the center of mass because this is just considering the wheel fully translating. And then here we have to have some relative velocity of P with respect to the center of mass based on the rotation. So we'll get zero equals VCM minus VP slash CM. So that's the velocity of that point P with respect to the center of mass in this pure rotation. And we know that in the pure rotation, the velocity of this has to be R omega, because that's how rotation works, V equals R omega. We can rearrange this and say that my velocity of the center of mass is now equal to my velocity of P with respect to the center of mass which remembers our omega, and this shows that the velocity of the center of mass of this wheel, as long as it's rolling without slipping, is equal to our omega. And with that, we get these relationships here. You can do the same thing with acceleration. And this one's actually maybe, eh, it's, all, it's all similar. 